Hello, you amazing people. Figured I'd go out for a little tootle around the neighborhood. Have a break between the raindrops. It's been raining on and off. So no ride this time, no going to a trail or anything. I had to be here to uh, sell my Versus, which used to live right here. So that has been sold, which is good. So I got rid of the Interceptor, got rid of the Versus, paid for that. I also picked up a new helmet. Show you a picture. Hello. And um, my old one, the Bell MX-9 Adventure, is just getting on in years. It's getting a little bit raggedy. And I thought, well, while supply chains and all those issues well, haven't become a major issue quite yet that I should probably jump get my new helmet and um, that way I have it for the next few years don't have to worry about that so this little tool today is a bit about this setup I do like the fact that the camera it's a little hard to see here I might have to do a better it's mounted directly on the chin okay I'm turning the helmet so you can't see it I'll have to show you some video, but it's not mounted here with the big arm. It's just right on the chin and comes straight forward. So a little bit less hardware, which I like. I don't know how it's going to do from a audio viewpoint, wind viewpoint, all that. I thought what I would do is to discuss I was thinking it could be like my mottos my moto mottos but really in the end it's more or less my motorcycle philosophy so I thought it'd be kind of fun to go out and just chit chat so the first thing I will talk about is being a serious motorcyclist and back when I first started, I got the Suzuki and rode it, learned, learned a lot, rode a lot at any moment I could. It was a matter of if it, it was dry for half an hour in the winter, I was out on the bike around the neighborhood. You know, I took the MSF and got my license and then, you know, started riding a little bit further. I'd go to Oregon, see my mom. So those were like two day trips. I would ride down, you know, kind of a windy route down, see her, spend the night, then windy route back. Then I got the Sprint, which more power, more, you know, everything. And I found that it wasn't necessarily all that comfortable, but I was still going to ride it. And I was still going to put lots of miles on it. And I was still going to ride fast. And, you know, my wrist would hurt, my neck would hurt, my back would hurt. And the way the seat was, it would slide me into the tank. But in my mind, that was just part of the dues that you had to pay. If you wanted to be a serious motorcyclist, you had to pay the dues and do the stuff. And even if it hurt, you did it anyway. And and I, you know, I rode a lot and I saw some nice things and it was okay. It wasn't like I was being tortured or, you know, anything. And then as I, I think I mentioned in the other video, I went to Southern California to get my wife's Bonneville. And I took three days riding it home. And the number one thing that I discovered from that was that it was a blast and I was having a great time even though my route I love that barn even though the route was straight up I-5 I mean the most boring thing you could do is ride on the freeway I hate riding the freeway and I did it and even even with that I was having a great time the, and that was sort of an epiphany for me it was like wait a minute I would go out and ride and because I was sort of supposed to I guess or I should or I don't know whatever and like I said the Bonneville just changed it to being a, a matter of why don't I go out and have fun and you know make the motorcycling be something I enjoyed doing wanted to do and did in when I wanted to do it I, I wouldn't so I stopped going out all the time just because I quote should I'd go out when I wanted to because that's sort of my motorcycle philosophy is that if if you're being too serious 
you're doing it wrong. My second motto, philosophy, is that I like riding, I'm of the camp, I enjoy riding smaller, slower bikes fast, let's just say slower bikes, it makes, makes it easier, as opposed to faster bikes slow. And as I've mentioned, I had at one point a Sprint ST, which was 75 foot-pounds of torque, 125 horses, and that sucker would gallop, and it was fast, and it was powerful. And I spent a lot of time in second and third gear in it. And with all that extra power, one of the, I mean, this is going to sound boring, you know, this is, this is my adult reasoning, is that you do more damage to stuff in a maintenance viewpoint. You know, having all that power on top, you wear your tires out more quickly, you wear your chain and sprockets out. So by having a motorcycle that's a slower motorcycle, you avoid some of those issues. Now the other issue is, like I said, if you've got a really super powerful bike, it can make you a little lazy in that you don't have to worry as much about your riding technique. You can enter into a corner, slam on the brakes, make your way around the corner, and then power out of it because you've got all the power to do it. With a slower motorcycle, you don't have that power so you have to ensure that you get through the corner at speed. I'm going to turn around because it's raining over here. I'm hoping it'll be less raining in another direction. Um, you, enter the, you have to enter and get through the corner with more of your speed because you don't have the gobs and gobs of power to just make up for it afterwards. So when I had a bike that had less power, I, I found that I was again being a little bit more thoughtful of my corner enter speed and trying to maintain speed through the corner and then getting on the gas all right so another bit of my moto philosophy has to do with uh, trips little multi-day trips and that is not to try and lock your plans down from the beginning. I'm a big believer, and this is going to be a bit contradictory sounding with my next one, but just stick with me and follow along. I'm a big believer in planning the route out, and that's because I want to make sure that I'm getting in all of the kind of riding that I want to have, which is, for me, it would be lots of twisty roads, mountain roads, long rivers, you know, where you get just twists and turns, that kind of thing. And I would rather spend seven hours going up into the hills and back down, up into the hills and back down around twisty roads, and then not getting all that far, than seven hours where you're doing four hours on the freeway to do a little bit of country road. You know, I, I just really hate riding freeways, so I do what I can to avoid them, and so it's all twisty roads. So it's, but the key is don't try to plan all four days or three days out in terms of things like hotels and stuff from before you leave because there are times where you're going to be at your first stop and you might be thinking you know I'm going to check my route and you're looking it up and you're check and you decide to do something different or maybe there's a change and like I've had a time where I was out into eastern Oregon and the route I wanted to go was closed because of uh, fires and if I had already planned a hotel down in you know wherever whatever town I'd be like SOL. I mean, obviously, you could just eat that, and right? But by not making the plans until the day, the morning of, I was able to avoid that. So for me, I typically will make my hotel reservation sometimes in the morning of the day if I know where I'm going or I have a plan of where I'm going. And sometimes I'll do it midday, like when I'm taking a break, if I'm in anything like uh, you know decent cell range, or if I have to, if I stop at a. Uh, Actually, I'm going to go left here. Wi-Fi or something and make a reservation at lunch or something. You know, and so that way, by not having everything planned out, you don't have to chase a specific destination or a time when you want to make a route change, you know, midway. Here's another, another uh, moto philosophy is don't compare yourself 
where you're at now with other people with where they're at now. It's very easy, especially in the off-road world, to look at guys and gals who are expert riders. Good example if you're a dirt rider is if you're looking at um, MVBDR, so you've got Josh and Nat who are both expert riders. And he rides a T7, she rides a KTM 390, and they also ride enduro bikes. And they go on insane rides at insane speed in insane areas, and they're amazing. It's great fun to watch them. They have a great, you know, great whole thing going on with their channel. But it's also easy to look at them and say, oh, I'm, I'm nothing like them. You know, I'm, I, I stink in comparison. I'm, uh, you know, slow and no skill, and I'm afraid to do what they do, and I could never be that person or whatever, right? But the thing you have to remember is that they have been doing it for a very long time, and they are experts. I, on the other hand, have just started. I, um, I'm, you know, I'm not a beginner. Uh, I've been riding motorcycles for quite a while. But in terms of the dirt stuff, you know, I've only been doing it for a year on a Versus, and this is my next, this is basically my second year I'm on this thing. And so, for me to look at them, you know, Nerb One or Shadower or, you know, just all of them. So the same thing happens in the photography world. I had this with landscape photography. You know, you look at the YouTube channels or Instagram or Flickr or whatever, and you're looking at people who have been doing it for years, some of whom are professionals, and they're presenting their best work most of the time. And you're looking at what you're producing thinking, you know, my photos suck compared to these people. And, you know, and maybe they do. Let's just even, let's grant that premise. Yes, they do. Well, so what? What did their photos look like the first month, they were, first year, right? You know, remembering by the time we see these people putting up YouTube channels and stuff and trying to make a living at, at either photography or motorcycles or what have you, oftentimes, you know, they've been doing it for a very long time. And like I said, they're already experts, basically. Sometimes they're professional, sometimes they aren't. But, you know, give yourself five years of doing it hardcore and then compare yourself, right? So when you're first starting out, don't compare yourself to them. If you stall the bike constantly, if you fall over constantly, if you're turning back because you're too afraid to do something, you're not, so what? I mean, compare yourself to your, who you were yesterday. I'm just gonna take a look at this sign. You know, who are you? Um, last year and who are you now are you are you better are you more confident it's kind of cool look at this place I love artwork like you know some of that stuff <clears throat> and so that's a big one is you know be, be mindful of comparisons that are the wrong you're basically making the wrong comparison What are we doing? Ah, here's a here's another uh, one of my moto mottos, moto philosophies. Life is too short to ride only one motorcycle. Now, if you've got a bike, and you've only had the one bike, and you love it, and you don't want anything else, hey, good for you. For me, I've had a number of bikes. I'll put a link to the video of all my motorcycles I've had. And it's been a lot of fun getting to experience the different types of engines, the different um, uh, configurations of, of bike, and you know, one's a sport touring, one's more of a naked bike. Obviously, I've got this dual sport now, or travel bike, as I would call it. Uh, classics, right? I've had the Bonneville and the Royal Enfield. And, you know, I've had, let's see, we've got the inline four was the first bike. Of course, make most of their power at the top end, so you got to really wring the neck. And then I tried the Sprint, which is a triple, and that gave me my first taste of well, one, a triple, but two, the low-end torque. 
is really kind of fun. I mean, you sort of get the sense of that's what I enjoy. You know, you come out of a corner and brum, and you you, know, you can just sort of surf the, the torque curve as opposed to constantly having to shift to find the right RPM level. And then I had the same issue with the uh, BMW, my Rockster, which is the 1150 oil head, uh, 90 horsepower. So it wasn't a horsepower monster, but it had, I think, 75 or 80 foot-pounds of torque, which was just, I love that. Absolutely love that. And, you know, with the Bonneville, it's a parallel twin. It didn't have a lot of character. It was a sewing machine, as people would call it. But I much, I would have much preferred to have the 270 crank scrambler back then had, because it was just a more, more characterful in terms of its uh, performance. I'd say by the using the 270 crank, it feels more like a V-twin. I, I don't know if that's true or not, because that's actually one of the engines I've never had. I've never had a V-twin. I really, I, I kind of want one, but it's, so I don't know if I'll ever have a V-twin or not. You know who knows? If uh, the economy turns around and everything gets way way better maybe maybe I'll buy one you know I'll get a iron 83 or something kind of like kind of like those things then obviously with the versus it's parallel twin as well so you know it's I've had the experience of all those different motorcycles and I really I, to me that's I encourage you if, if possible and the way to do it is to buy used buy one used ride it for a year or two sell it you basically get close to what you, you bought it for as long as you don't hack the crap out of it you know that's that's one of the key things for me is maybe this is a, a sub one of my sub things is that when you modify your motorcycle keep the original parts don't do anything that you can't undo Thanks, man. That was nice of him. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so when I, you know, if I take uh, exhaust off a bike or whatever, I don't throw it away in some dramatic, you know, video of I've got a new exhaust. You know, I keep it. And the reason I do that is that when I want to resell a bike, and you know, I love reselling my bikes, I can take the parts off that I bought put the original parts back on and believe it or not that helps with the new buyer they aren't concerned about your mechanical abilities and, and then obviously the other side of that too is I would then sell those parts either on eBay or I would use them as incentive for the new buyer right I a good example was a seat with the Bonneville uh, you, you could say hey I've got the upgraded uh, Thruxton gel seat that I have for sale but if you want to take it home today I'll throw it in right you can do that kind of thing right if, does that make sense so you know I tried I do that for everything except for things like heated grips because I'm not gonna cut these back off people don't mind heated grips so much right but things like if I took the like the windshield or the mirrors like I did with the versus I just took all that back off made it as close to stock as I could and, and there you go. And so that goes along with the uh, buying used, selling used, trying new bikes philosophy is that don't permanently mod your bike uh, if, if at all possible. It's a great way to be able to say, be able to buy a bike, ride it for a couple years, decide I want to try a different bike. So you sell it and any difference in cost is rental fee, right? If you buy it for say, say you buy a bike for 5,500, and you ride it for two years and then you sell it for five grand right so basically you've rented the bike for 500 bucks for two years it's not bad and it's not quite as good as a bike with a nice exhaust on it uh, I'm not sure if I missed anything I think that kind of might be it Kind of a filler video for not having a trail to ride on today.
anyway, I think that's all I have for you. Thanks for riding along, riding around with me, trying out my new helmet. Can't tell if my forehead's uncomfortable or just cold. I feel it up there, though. Like I said, if you have any specific moto philosophies that you live by, leave those in the uh, comments below. And of course, one of the best ones, one of the most important ones, is to always remember, life is short. Ride the best roads.